Chapter 4, Theories and Research on Classical Conditioning. Part 1, Blocking. Blocking is a classical conditioning phenomenon that challenges the frequency principle of association. It was discovered by Leon Kamen. He first presented uh, his results at the Miami Symposium on the Prediction of Behavior at the University of Miami in 1968. In that symposium, he described an experiment with two groups of rats, a blocking group and a control group. Rats in both groups had been trained to press a lever in order to obtain food. Both groups experienced two phases of training in which Kamen paired conditioned and unconditioned stimuli followed by a test phase in which he evaluated whether a conditioned response occurred. For rats in the blocking group, phase one consisted of a series of trials in which a light, the conditioned stimulus, was paired with an electrical charge, the unconditioned stimulus. By the end of phase one, the light elicited conditioned suppression, indicated by a decrease in the rate of lever pressing when the light was on. In other words, the light was established as an ex excitatory CS. In phase two, blocking group rats received a series of trials where two stimuli, the previously conditioned light and a new CS, a tone, were presented simultaneously and then followed by the US. In the test phase, came and presented the tone alone without the light or the US. The procedure for rats in the control group was the same as for rats in the blocking group, except that they didn't experience any CS-US pairing during phase one. For both groups, came and presented the tone alone without the light or the US in the test phase. Note that both groups experienced the same number of trials in phase two. They had the same experience when it came to the association between the tone CS and the US, the same number of pairings. So according to the frequency principle, they should develop the same conditioned response. Kamen was looking for evidence of conditioned suppression, freezing, lack of movement, stillness, uh, etc. in the presence of the tone. Since stillness was difficult to measure directly in 1968, he used the change in lever pressing as evidence of condition suppression. The bigger the decrease in responding compared to each rat's baseline response rate from before phase one, the greater the suppression. That's why a lower relative response rate in the test phase indicates a larger conditioned response. Do you think there was a group difference in the conditioned response in the test phase? I'm going to ask you what your predictions were so pause the video to note yours down now. In fact, there was a difference between the two groups, a much smaller decrease in lever pressing for the blocking rats than for the control rats. Kamen concluded that prior conditioning with the light somehow blocked the later conditioning of the tone. One way to account for this result is to consider the predictive value of the CS. Rats in the blocking group had already learned that the light predicted the occurrence of the shock during phase one. The addition of the tone did nothing to change or contradict this prediction. It added no new information, so no association formed between the tone and the shock. For the control group rats, however, there was no prior expectation that a shock would occur, so the light shock and tone shock associations both formed during phase two. The results of this experiment and others like it formed the foundations of the Rescorla-Wagner model, the subject of the next video.